When we look at homicides that take place in the United States, it's more common for them to be committed by a man. Women make up less than 19% of all of the homicides that take place in the United States, and that percentage goes down even further when it's a woman killing a male partner. Furthermore, it is even less common for a woman to commit a homicide or a murder in a violent fashion, such as strangling or beating someone to death, dismembering bodies, things like that. It's more common for a woman to use poison or shoot somebody, mainly because it's often harder for a woman to overpower a man. Um, just strength-wise, it's much easier to overpower a woman. and women often are able to kind of like dissociate it a little bit where they don't they don't have that rage in them like oftentimes we hear men talk about when they are on trial for murder that they just came over this rage it's more common for a woman to do something that's a little bit depersonal such as shooting somebody hi friends welcome back so today we are discussing the case of shad therian and taylor shabiznes this particular murder has been stuck in my mind for a while. It's absolutely terrible what happened and it's deeply upsetting and violent and dark and I wanted to discuss it because we are hearing about the things that Taylor is doing in uh, court and so I was interested in talking about this so I thought it would be a perfect video to come back with and um, talk about Taylor and Chad's relationship a little bit. On February 23rd, 2022, a woman named Tara Packenage was awoken by her screen door being slammed in her home and she heard a car drive off and like the doors slamming in the car. So she was woken up and she made her way downstairs. It was around 3 a.m. a few minutes beforehand and she knew that her son Shad was down in the basement with his friend Taylor, that they had spent the last couple evenings together. Um, she hasn't seen Shad for about two days almost at this point, but she decided to go down there to make sure that everything was okay. And as she looked around the basement, she didn't see anything. But as she started to make her way back up the stairs, she looked down and saw a bucket with a towel laid across it. When she removed the towel, she saw something so horrifying that no parent or really anybody should ever have to see. She removed the towel and saw that Shad's head was in the bucket. So Tara immediately called the 911 line of the Green Bay Police Department and they made their way to her home on Stony Brook Lane. And when they arrived, Tara let police know that she hadn't seen her son Shad for the last couple days, but she just assumed he came back home and that he was spending some like private time with his friend Taylor. And the two had met up, I believe Taylor picked him up uh, about two days prior, they left for a while and then returned back home and Taylor ended up picking him up. It was like February 21st at around 9.30. So at this point, they'd been together for over like two whole days and that was the last time that Tara had seen Shad alive. Shad and Taylor both attended the Bayport High School and neither one of them graduated, but they did remain in contact after graduation. They were both around 24 years old and... Tara really didn't think anything of it. She, you know, knew Taylor a little bit. She didn't think anything of them spending time together alone. And so her not seeing Shad for a couple days really didn't cross her mind. So she was absolutely shocked when she went into the basement and saw that her son had been murdered. So the police quickly made their way to Taylor's home and saw that she still had blood all over her clothes and her hands and it was just like all over her body it was very messy and police started questioning her and so they quickly took her back to the station because i believe that they thought she was extremely dangerous right off the bat seeing that she was completely covered in blood and that she seemed to have just left shad's house it was probably a great decision to take her to the police station immediately so when they arrived back at the station, she spoke with Detective Graff and he let her know that Shad's head had been found in a bucket and Taylor said, quote, that's pretty fucked up, 
end quote. And Taylor continued to make jokes all throughout this investigation, and I'm sure she will continue to in court about telling the police that they will have good luck finding his organs, that they will have good luck finding his body parts, things like that. She made several jokes and was very flippant about the fact that Shad was dead and was dismembered. Now, Taylor did admit to police that her and Shad had smoked marijuana, taken methamphetamines, and they also took trazodone before returning back to Tara's home. So when Taylor told police her story between her and Shad, she let police know that she was married, her husband's name is Warren, and that Shad has like kind of been like her lover on the side and that they spent some time together without her husband knowing. And Taylor basically told police that she blacked out and went crazy, that her and Shad were having intimate relations, that they were consensual and they were participating in some more rough acts. And Taylor told police that she started choking Shad with a dog chain and blacked out. But she also said that she enjoyed doing it so she couldn't stop. So that doesn't really make sense if she's saying she blacked out and just went crazy and did it, but she also enjoyed it. So I feel like they're gonna have a very interesting time picking apart her like testimony and picking apart the things she has said because she clearly enjoyed what she did, but she's also saying she blacked out. So I definitely feel like there is some confusion here on her part that she is not being completely truthful in the way she behaved that evening. And I have not seen at this point if Taylor and Warren have filed for a divorce. They do have a young baby together. She had a baby in 2022. And so I'm not quite sure what's going on with their relationship. The last I've seen with Warren is that he was arrested at the same time, but it's all kind of blurry. Like there's not a lot of information out about Warren, but I will keep everybody updated as we find more out about the situation because some people believe that Warren may have had something to do with this. So that's why he was arrested as well. So I'm very interested to see what happens within their relationship. If they do get divorced, I'm assuming they would. Um, and what happens with their child, I'm hoping that he's able to just go to a loving home and maybe with family members because Taylor is absolutely a disgusting person. This entire time in court and when she was telling her story, she's just continually making jokes and, you know, making jokes about the body and that it was easier to use bread knives on him and she just clearly enjoying what she did and making light of it. Even in her court pictures, you could see her smirking and in her last court appearance, she even attacked her own lawyer and they had to pull her off of him. So Taylor is just making this into a complete circus. She clearly enjoys the attention. Taylor also attempted to plea insanity, but she was found fit to stand trial by a psychologist. And Wisconsin does not have the death penalty and it was repealed in 1853, making it the longest time a state has been without the death penalty. So right now it's the common belief that Taylor's combination of mental illnesses that include but aren't limited to depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and several other issues that she does have that she was not currently getting any sort of help with, and the combination of drugs and drinking is what potentially pushed her over the edge or caused her to have some sort of mania and that is why she attacked Shad. But I'm very thankful that she is not able to plead insanity because then she would just be sent to like a clinic potentially for the rest of her life. But still, I do feel that when you commit a crime this horrific, I do feel like jail time is more fair, regardless of your mental state oftentimes because she clearly enjoyed it, right? So, and when you're committing a murder and then you're going through and cutting up the body, dismembering, um, making jokes about it, it does seem different than somebody who just blacked out and did something. You know, we often see uh, people claiming that they blacked out and like killed their partner, but 
I don't feel like it was a blackout situation. I feel like that her mental state was not in a good place because of the drugs, probably made it worse. And she committed these acts, but she also did so many things afterwards instead of just running or turning herself in, which sometimes does happen, or uh, allowing herself to be found by his mother. She ran away after she did these acts. So to me, it's saying that she knew exactly what she was doing and that she enjoyed it. Furthermore, Taylor made comments to detectives and the investigators asking them if they understood what it was like to love something so much that you had to kill it. So I definitely feel like maybe it wasn't like fully premeditated. Maybe she did do something on the spot, but it could have been something she was thinking about. Maybe not something she necessarily planned, but she still did it out of malice. She still did it out of anger, clearly, because dismembering and cutting up a body does definitely show some sort of anger. And when police were looking to recover Shad's body, they found his parts everywhere. They found it in his home, um, in boxes, and like storage boxes, in closets that Taylor put organs and things in there. And in the bucket, there was also knives that she used and male reproductive organs. There was in that in the bucket as well as Shad's head. And when they searched Taylor's van, they found a crock pot box with Shad's legs in it. So I do feel like Taylor went that extra mile and she was extremely violent, which is very uncommon for women to do this. We don't see a lot of women dismembering bodies. It just doesn't happen nearly as frequently as it does when the male is a perpetrator. Shad's family has greatly suffered after his death. They posted a GoFundMe page in order to help Tara pay for a funeral, as well as housing and transportation. Shad's uncle Nathan Minot posted on Facebook, quote, Yesterday we were given some devastating news. Our nephew Shad Therian was taken from us by what I can only assume is a monster, end quote. Shad was only 24 years old at the time of his death, and he was greatly loved by his friends and family. Shad was an artist and he enjoyed wood burning and overall was just a kind person that his family loved deeply. Taylor is an absolute monster and I just feel so bad for Shad and his family. I just, it hurts so bad to hear things like this, that somebody just decided to be so violent. And unfortunately, like we see often in murder cases, more so with men, that Taylor had an arrest record. Nothing uh, pertain to murder, but she was violent with police, other people. She obstructed uh, police officers from being able to arrest her. She had a lot of things that she has done in the past and has really not served hardly any jail time for what she's done. So she continually gets away with things and they become more escalated. And this happens so commonly in our prison system. People will be arrested for like 10 years for having a little bit of marijuana and somebody who continually does bad actions and hurts people continually gets let out on the street. So it's very sad and I do think that certain things need to change to get people like Taylor off the street, to teach them maybe a lesson, maybe get their mental health evaluated while they're in prison, to show this is a extremely dangerous person because what Taylor did was so violent and disturbing that I think she could have definitely hurt money uh, like many more people if she were available because if she was like out cheating on her husband and having a good time with other people I do feel like she maybe would have committed these other acts because that was very violent and that's just not something you just do out of the clear blue that's something that uh, you want to do and that you have the gumption to do especially dismembering a body to the level that she did and I want to extend my deepest condolences to Shad's family I hope that this terrible act doesn't cause you to not think about Shad in this light. I hope that you're able to remember him for the kind and loving person that he was, and I hope that you are able to receive some healing and help throughout this time. And of course, if you have any information about this case, or if you need any help in general with mental health or abuse, please check the description box. I will leave all links that will help you out down there. And I hope you all have a great day. If there are any cases that you would like me to cover, anything at all, please leave me a comment. I always look forward to seeing what you guys 
uh, want me to talk about. And thank you so much. I hope you all stay safe out there and have a great day.